kind of hard to label yourself. You call yourself an artist and all of a sudden you sound like an asshole or you know, pretentious. But I like to think that I have some maybe slightly interesting skill sets and at the end of the day I'm just trying to make food that has an emotional connection to myself and something that is, you know, beautiful. So you can take that however you want. My name is Jordan Conn. I'm the chef owner of Red Medicine Restaurant in uh, Beverly Hills. It's a modern, progressive restaurant. We try to make our food as beautiful as we can and taking natural ingredients and make, turning them into things that you know, are really spectacular. This is our newest addition to the dessert menu. I've actually been a pastry chef my whole career. Red Medicine is the first time I've actually done savory professionally. I mean, I've been cooking since I was very young. My first cooking idol was Thomas Keller, for sure. I got a copy of the French Laundry Cookbook for Christmas one year when I was in high school, and that pretty much was the day that everything changed for me. Right when I went to culinary school, I wrote Thomas Keller a letter. I mean, it was like a, an absurd, like eight page letter and professing my great love for him and you know, all of these things. Man, if I had a copy of that right now, I bet it'd be hysterical. He responded through email like six months later when I opened my email that day. Like, that was a big freak out moment. I started there at the French Laundry when I was 17. I'm sure there's probably some nine year old prodigy in there today, but it's certainly at the time, what I was told by the chefs then is that I was the youngest to start there. This is actually the second course on the tasty menu. The base of it is a custard. This is walnut marzipan, because we don't have enough pastry techniques in our food already. And we're rolling them in uh, purple cabbage powder. Color was always a big inspiration. There's a lot of times when I'll want a certain flavor or an ingredient or a texture in a dish, but I'm not happy with the color, so we'll change the color of it. Like a walnut's not supposed to be purple. A brown walnut didn't make sense in the dish aesthetically, so we made it purple so that it would fit and also it you know, bridges the taste as well. This is the first course on our tasty menu. It's based on trout roe. When you're eating raw snap peas with the trout roe, the dual texture of the two sort of spheres are kind of neat because these are crunchy and these pop as well. So these are pickled onion petals. And this is lemon curds. So we're just gonna take our granola. All the, everything that we just worked so hard for, we're gonna cover it up. Try to make sure that everything is layered. When you look at a Jackson Pollock painting, Part of the most fascinating parts of it is, is the layering and like you know that the first, second, third, fourth and all the layers in between that have the, have the same amount of uh, care put into it as the final layer which is the you know the one that's most in your face so we kind of try to make it similar where you know, even though we're covering it up we don't we still care about placing everything really properly. That's the first course. Next is a dish of uh, mushrooms. The finished dish version of this dish actually gets a glass cloche over it, so it actually looks like a living terrarium. Nature certainly is a theme in our dishes. When we first opened, my sous chef and I would go to the farmer's markets in Santa Monica. I remember driving by, and it's like, holy shit, look at that whole hillside. It's covered in you know, fennel or, or nasturtiums or whatever it is. And so we'd get out, we'd pick some, bring it back, and then eventually we'd spend more time picking and less time at the markets, and then eventually we just cut out the markets altogether and we just went foraging. It's kind of a showstopper, I suppose, at the table when it drops, because a lot of people will just continue with their conversation, whatever, which is totally fine, but this one generally stops at whatever. You guys ready? Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey. How's it going? Gloria and Mike are really great to go out with. Um, Gloria is my girlfriend. She's a sommelier at Spago. Mike, oh man, he's a bowl of fun. It's kind of impossible to not fall in love with Mike the first five minutes that you meet him. He's like a professional eater, and he likes to think of himself as a, as a chef, but he's not a chef. I'm a professional third wheel. He even wore his button-down shirt today. It's a little too small. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, no, it's true. But powder it's... blue is a nice touch. All right, so what's the plan for tonight? Where are we going? First place is La Civitria. Mike, I'm gonna order a special dish for you called Bloody Clams. It tastes like so many microplane pennies over the clams. Why would you want to eat that But dish? some people love them. Some people think they're amazing. Yeah. You I like be, blood. You may be one of those people. Is oh. a clam with like blood 
It seems like there's something wrong, something wrong with that clam. Something like we should throw these away. Yeah. These are the people that save all of those clams, all, all, all the discarded, clams. rejected clams. Who's ready for some blood? Oh, they're closed. Oh, they're open. Yeah. <laughs> they're open. We started with La Cevicheria, and I chose to go there because it's a small uh, restaurant, literally mom and pop. It's owned by a husband and wife, Catalina and Julio. They're really, really sweet people. And beyond that, the food is really delicious. They don't make anything bad. Everything there is really good and dishes that you can't really get at most places. My restaurant, La Cevicheria, is open since, uh, since 2002. We open at the end of the year. And we've been, you know, rocking all these years. Uh, yeah, are you ready? Yes. Uh, I want the huetulca, okay. as well as the shrimp tacos. Um, we're also going to get fish tacos. We're going to get an order of fish tacos for everybody. We're going to do an order of the bloody clams. The half or the ceviche? You want half or ceviche? Ceviche. When Jordan comes to the restaurant, he orders the mariscada, which is uh, New Zealand mussels, shrimp, and calamari. And uh, cooking that sauce. This reminds me of like my childhood. My grandmother used to make Cuban like, seafood suzes. Are you Cuban? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know that? I did not. His mother said, you know, it's not like this is like sitting back there in a, in a pot. You know, everything takes time because she does. She makes everything fresh. Yeah, everything no, you can tell. It's very, very good. Oh, this is really good. I never had this. Mm. Very good shrimp. Really good. Delicious, right? Are you supposed to peel it? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I ate the peel it was fantastic. This is the bloody clam. Mint. And tomatoes and onions, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of English sauce. I don't, I can tell the name, it's Worcestershire, something like that. I cannot say the name exactly of that English sauce. This is a very popular dish. This is like our signature dish. This is wow. How are you, Good, Gloria? how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? So nice to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. This is the bloody clown ceviche. Did you see this? That, that is a lot. That's a lot of blood. Go for it. <laughs> the tiniest bite. <laughs> How is it? Not bad at all. It's good. They might want to change the name of the dish, though. Two. Juicy clams. You know, you know. <laughs> so on the half shell, it's just like a half shell and then a bloody clam inside. In their pure form. Can Lamps. I get one on the half shell, you think? So yeah. Yeah. I feel like wet in row. Yeah. There you go, chef. Here are your bloody oh. clams on oh, the thank shell. thank you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful. OK, so now I can get the full experience. So this is just how they come out, nothing to them. It yeah. doesn't like drown in its own blood. There's so much blood. It's the blood now. Stop procrastinating. <laughs> He's trying to buy him some time. <laughs> no, I don't think it's... And that's like their own, their ink. But I prefer ink. Ink is better. <laughs> to ink, yeah, the, the blood. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Oh, can you, can you come by the restaurant tonight? Yeah, you what time? Yet? 10 o'clock, 10.30? Thank you so much. I'll see you in a bit. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. OK, bye-bye, good night. So now we're going for ice cream? Now we're going for ice cream. Uh, we're heading to uh, Quinell, and the chef owner of Quinell used to be my sous chef uh, at 14. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jamba Juice. Oh, yeah. They have a, a drink on the menu called the Orange Dream Machine. Oh, I love that drink. That's an incredible drink. John, John invented That's it. That's like inventing like the hole puncher. So much. There you go. Oh, man. I know John. I worked with John. He makes really good ice creams. That's basically the reason why we decided to go. But I've been there before, and you know, I know John can't say no to me. I just kind of walk wherever I want anyway. So, chef, what is that? No, no, we have to guess them. Oh, that's good. Oh, we have that's to guess good. them. That's part it's of the green. Game. He's an awesome guy. He's really nice. He's a lot of fun. He's really quiet. Like, whenever he speaks, it's always very important and like hysterical, and he's very poignant. Do you want to see a pastry chef oh, freak out? Yeah. 
Just leave his freezer door open. <laughs> really? Please don't do that. <laughs> One thing that makes his ice creams a bit interesting is he uses eggs in his ice cream, but he doesn't cook them. And it was fascinating. The first time I ate his ice cream, I was like, I was like, there are eggs in here. Your texture is different. He goes, yeah, they're not cooked. I was like, oh, it's so weird. He's like, how come? And he explained it. He's like, well, I wanted kind of Philadelphia style ice cream, which is basically just milk and sugar, like a ice cream that you would buy from the grocery store. It melts very, very liquid. He's like, I wanted to have that thin melting quality, um, but I still wanted flavor from the eggs. So we still put, so we put pasteurized eggs in it. It's like, that's really smart. Okay. You want a cone? Yes. Uh, uh, I was gonna go a cup. Should I'm I go cone? Cone? We can test the uh, walk. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so Mike got a cone. John put streusel in the bottom. So Mike's goal was to get to the streusel before it sogged out. So he basically ate an entire massive ice cream cone in about two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I worked. It was a long road, a lot of work. I'm there. Real good. <laughs> Gloria went with a more traditional, did she go for one? I think she went cup. Oh, it's so good. I got the blueberry pie and the root beer. Epic. Just epic. And then I decided to go with an off the menu item, which is the ice cream sandwich. Snickerdoodle cookie with Concord grape creamsicle and strawberry shortcake and caramel. Oh, delicious. John has two little baby boys. Um, they're both like super cute little Asian babies. As he got a huge blown up cutout of his son Joshua's face. That's amazing. <laughs> he's really cute. How cute is that kid? I know. That and he's is... right next to the safe food handling guy. <laughs> Why yeah. is he there? To make sure that people wash their hands after they use the restroom. He's the moral conscience of Pinnell. Look at his eyes. He's looking right at them. Right at, right at the They follow you. You gonna come with us, all right? Right. Mike's got a spot for spicy tuna hand rolls. Uh, we'll fill you in. Mike is a spicy tuna hand roll expert. All right, let's go. Can I run to the bathroom right. really quick? I will wash my hands. Your son will be proud. Oh, where is the car? Oh, there it is. So where are we going? We're Mike's... gonna go, my friend, uh, Shuey. I started going to this sushi place a while back and uh, he's a really nice guy, unbelievable West Hollywood. We're gonna grab some hand rolls. I have never been here. This is Mike's hidden gem that he's recommending. We're going in blind and we're trusting him. <laughs> and, you know, if it sucks, trust me, we'll, we'll all give him the ration of shit afterwards. You don't see this every day, a grand opening and a four lease sign. <laughs> that business did not do well, fast. <laughs> that's like, that's the equivalent of how quickly I eat a handle. <laughs> four handles really quick, is that good? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Mike has a, has a personal love affair with spicy tuna hand rolls. It's like, it's like a frog's tongue. You have to catch it in super slow motion to see him eat it because it goes so fast. Would you like another? <laughs> That's how it's done. The hand roll was, was great. Uh, the rice was warm, uh, it was properly seasoned, nice amount of vinegar and sugar. The fish was fresh. Um, you know, it was, it was everything you look for in a spicy tuna hand roll, I think. Mike definitely knows his way around. He's, he's been to enough places to know who has the good ones and who doesn't. Oh, this is good. That was very good. Really good, Andrew. Delicious. We had, now we gotta go back and cook. Yeah. I'm exhausted and full. You cook, I'll be drinking champagne. Yeah. <laughs> I am so hungry and ready to eat your southern I'm ready, food. Yeah. Can we make sweet potatoes? <laughs> Cornbread? <laughs> We're gonna make some uh, collard greens, uh, some cornbread. Uh, based on Mike's suggestion, we'll, we'll knock out some sweet potatoes. Oh, that was nice. excellent. Yeah. That was excellent. Chef, thank you. I thought it would be nice to invite every all the restaurants that we went to, invite those people back to cook for them because they were so generous to you know open up for us. So growing up in Savannah, I decided to make some southern food. So we did uh, collard greens and grits, cornbread. Um, we smoked a pork butt, sweet potatoes, um, just like really comforting food. It was nice, and I think southern food is always a winner. And also, it was late last night, so it's like it's nice, warm, like comforting food to have late at night. Okay, so these are just roasted in the skins, and then we peel them. Well, John is easy. I just put him on pastry, and he was done in five minutes. The banana cream pot. Woo! Oh, John's fucking. He's crushing it over there. Oh yeah, dude. Mike, uh, I gave him the task of the, the sweet potatoes and. 
there was some bourbon involved, and he's like, is this gonna flame? It's like, yes. It's like, how does it work? He wants to be a chef so bad, but he's just so terrible. Cool thing for you, now you feel like a real chef. I do, I really do, thank you. It probably tastes horrible, but, but I do feel good. Awesome, thanks guys for coming. Uh, this is just some southern food that I kind of grew up with. Uh, there's two pork butts. These are collard greens with um, bacon, uh, sweet potatoes, cornbread, and then Anson Mills uh, grits. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So excited. Thanks. We had, a, we had a fantastic meal at La Cevitria. Delicious. Really, really good. I have not had a lot of southern food, especially from this part of the south. <laughs> and it's very, very good. I think the Munchies meal was a success. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's so, somewhat nostalgic for me being back in the South. OMG, what is that? Is that banana pudding? Because if it is, I'm gonna die. Banana pudding, it's very Oh happy. my God. Thank, Thank you guys you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, great time. Thank you everybody. Thank you guys. Last night was just kind of a gluttonous tour of really good restaurants and we ordered way too much food and ate way too much ice cream and you know, a, a lot of bloody clams, and it was just, it was delicious, but by the end of it, we were just spent and exhausted. Is your shirt clean? Yep, I did it. You did it? That deserves an applause. This button's gonna shoot off and poke <laughs> eye at it, but, but I did, I did make it, it is clean. I will choke and die, and that will literally be the story. That would, that would be an out. Then they'd have their out. <laughs>